So I haven't, I have said this, but I haven't really explicitly said it, no, in Nietzsche's writings. And I'm saying the same thing exactly over and over again, and making it become very refined ultimately in the end. And like, yeah, the Antichrist and uh, Twilight of the Idols. Ever refining his principles, you know, yielding his principles. But, um, see, I'm kind of saying the same thing again, but I'm saying it in a different <laughs> orientation, I suppose. I bring a scientific crux upon theology and religion. It's an esoteric device, as any scientific inquiry is going to reveal some esoteric model. And, um, there's an analogy for this in nature, which I've, is very humbling. This both at the same time makes religion look very silly, but at the same time validates religion by mixing. So there's a little wormhole that I've figured out. So it'll make religion look really natural and silly, but then at the same time validate, validate, excuse me, um, the reality of this strange and esoteric device. We put, I've said this already, we put infrared cameras on uh, bees and they all look the same. But then we realised every now and then there's a heater bee. Now if you look at the Bible, like, you know, <laughs> okay, depends where you start. And cycles and cycles and things and stories and events. It's pretty much heater bees. Now heater bees have weird things, they, um, they command other bees and when the other bees listen to them, the command bees, they kind of direct them around. Um, they're not, when you think this now, they're not like Putin or rulers or or Hitlers or anything, um, or governments because they direct you around. If you follow such commandments, you will prosper. And that's why bees are very prosperous. Because they follow the commandments of the heater bee. And they do them no harm because <laughs> these bees, just like the heater bee, is solar connected. Um, so these are like, you know, silverback gorillas, I'm not sure, like they're probably all over nature. Everyone probably has some weird heater bees. And he's kind of like idolize them and worship them because you find out about them and you find out they're different. And they look the same and they act the same, but they're like solar charged people. And these solar charged people have the potential of turning other bees solar charged. You can make an immortal army of some sort, not immortal, but you know, a very army of 12 regiments of 1200,000, 1200 each, sorry, 1200 each, 14 on 400,000. Um, this is the signs of the eater, be yes, the extent of my potential. Shameful as a man of 50, so. But, um, oh yeah, I'm going out to Russia, you know, soon, don't worry, and I'm just going to give like Russia four, and China like four, three or four. And you know, contribution to communism, and uh, yeah, and there'll be no wars or anything. So we're, we're immortal down to the very brain, so there's no point fighting us in the first place. Um, but anyway, so excuse me. Um, so this is a weird, eloquent kind of naturalistic underlying of a lot of stuff that happened in the Bible. Um, if you want to go to Torah, which is the best place to go, um, there's a predicament at the beginning. It ends the beginning, begins end. There's a terrible, woeful. So you've seen in Egypt, it's like 1984, it's kind of like as bad as you can get. And then they exodus and run away and leave that all behind and start again. And what they're trying to do is make their own heater bee. Because the heater bee energy power was being coveted in Egypt. So they needed to go out and start their own heater bee. And this was Jacob. So you had um, Abraham. I'm pretty, like, you know, I haven't been able to study during jihad. It, it, it's a dilemma. I can't do some a lot of stuff, but um, I'm not sure if my tour is great actually. So, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it starts terrible in Egypt with Moses, mostly, and then the Exodus, and then Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. But uh, for some reason, I think I might have got this entirely backwards. But excuse me. Um, I don't know. Anyway, the story in my head. Anyway, they Exodus and try to achieve their own heater bee. And Abraham wanted this, and God was like, I can't give it to you, Abraham, but I might give it to your grandson. And it's a very big repetitive thing. Not right now, in generations to come, I might be able to do this. 
and his covenant was kept through these three generations. Like, you know, it's weird, like atoms, you know, work in trees. Anyway, atoms. But then, um, yeah, then um, he achieved the Heaterby. And it, this Heaterby <laughs> conveniently had 14 sons. It was a very ide ideal story. And it is an irony, you know, like it, they find each other everything they wanted. And then their own brothers, the, the themselves, the envy in their own brothers for this potential. They put Joseph down the well. And this was the future of Israel. This is why, like, the, the future was put down the well. <laughs> so the future was lost and lots of, it was famine, famine, basically. Lots of terrible things are happening. The things you're seeing at the moment are happening. And I've said this before, it's not really relevant, but it's a very <laughs> hilariously ironic then that Egypt saved the day, found Joseph and gave him an office and saved the day as it goes around in rivers, you know, it comes around and goes around. But, um, you know, like, if you ever, like somebody must have said, maybe like Moses, if you ever go back to Egypt, you will be just, and then ironically, Joseph went back to Egypt and was saved <laughs> and saved Israel. Save Jacob and save to get their future. So heater bees anyway is what I'm saying. It's very simple, isn't it? It's very eloquent. They look like you, they talk like you, they hang out with like you. If you're friends with one when you're growing up, they kinda notice everyone gets like giddy goats and a bit buzzy hanging out with you. And um then they find out about you and then they discover you. And they kill Rivers Cuomo's or you know, basically I, I didn't know the extent of what I was growing up in, but in Revelations it says, and then there will be a time when the dragon is just waiting to consume the baby. It'll get to that um, equilibrium. That the dragon is just waiting, so the dragon is just sitting around like a big government, waiting for Israelites to be born, and then they'll just consume them. So you see this in America all the time. People born for stardom. People born for, like, Cobain. They found some kid out in the middle of Hague Town, and he had a star. And they're going to give him an album they made never mind from. And they like we're going to give him anything. And he told told him very much like you have a star. You're made for stardom. And he was born into the mouth of a dragon. So it's, they're just waiting to consume them. You know what I mean? He was going to get killed one way or another in the end, and ripped off of all his money and royalties and stuff. And I've said this in earlier videos. They, then they got better at it, and it's like, oh, it's better to kill them earlier and use their name to make loads of crap music like Weezer. They killed Rivers Cuomo, maybe, probably. Very nice kid, and used his name to replicate his music, which was terrible. You know, like, but anyway, so this is very, very, you know, humbling situation that all these people that you've worshipped as Messiah and and and, and things are just technically heater bees. I can explain how to achieve heater beingness. Maybe another video probably take a while, but um, <laughs> it's ironically very funny, like being the most humble bee. Most humble, and then like I was trying to teach, like, competing to be the most humble. <laughs> no, no, no. Surely you are more humble than I. No, no, you're more. No, you're more. Must be. No, you must be more humble. <laughs> competing to be the most humble. Yeah. But um, so this esoteric device anyway. These heater beads are solar connected, so they're connected to the sun and the stars and the skies and heavens. So that's where you can't do them harm because you're technically harming the connection to heaven. But at the same time, they find out about them all the time, the pharaohs in Egypt, and they exploit them. And because they know they're special and they have weird effects, but pretty sure, pretty, like in Egypt, like it is the worst, not the worst case scenario, dignification of the situation, but it's really at a bad point. That's why you see Moses, he's like a prophet that's been plucked up out of the veg garden to deliver them, because 900 years ago, maybe Methuselah, I'm looking into it a bit much, or a bit these days, but maybe Methuselah had, like, suffered immortal perdition for 900 years and then disintegrated completely, like Yoda, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then a prophet had to come forth, so he was destroyed Christianity, probably, I imagine so, this is where Muhammad came from, he was probably Oh, and test the patience of or mercy of Jesus Christ. I say five hundred BC. He has pushed it very far then, and then they did the same again. It might have been four hundred, four hundred eighty, fourteen hundred eighty. But then he's got a prophet, a Christian prophet, Muhammad, 
because he's probably destroyed Christianity and he needed to make it right. And he told everybody how to make it right. They haven't really reached absolution in their jihad, you know what I mean? I'm here, you know, so whatever. But, um, yeah, but um, I'm meant to be the prophet of understanding. I was meant to really get you there. And, uh, so this esoteric device, um, it, like I said, it makes religion look really silly, doesn't it? It revolved as being like fanaticizing over very natural occurrence of heater bees. And you see bees even have lots of heater bees. You know what I mean? In America boasted to have 50. You know what I mean? Where do your buffalo roam? Anyway, they don't. <laughs> they, they gobbles them all up. Um, and then they conquest places with stars. So they'll conquest nice neighborly places like everywhere they conquest. Vietnam, Middle East, the first world conquest on Ireland at the moment. Um, British stars. Because their liberties will be threatened. So they feel that anyway, they're part of um, So at the same time, like I said, this makes a very naturalistic explanation for certain people, John the Baptist was a heater bee. John the Baptist was a heater bee and uh, turned Jesus on. Like a heater bee can turn on certain people. And John the Baptist was heater being loads of people at one place last time. <laughs> like, like a bad look kind of no, graffiti artist, you know what I mean? He was, he was bold, man, you know what I mean? He was kind of there and then he was like, I'll just make loads of people immortal. Because <laughs> they put him into like holy perdition. They were dragging the Levites down into holy perdition. So he just went out like a real badass, and it is kind of badass, I, I don't know to bother people. And then he happened to bless uh, another Israelite, an early you know, child of Israel, Jesus. <laughs> and he said, behold, a lamb. And like, a lamb, because they're both lambs, they're both Israelites. So he's like, oh, behold, cousin, brother. So I never explained this. Do we all hold heater bees as false idols? So these are important special people like John the Baptist or Jesus were really clever, really very intelligent and really nice and wonderful people. But then we hold them in idolatry and that becomes very problematic. That you can't that you naturally but then again it makes us look very silly, doesn't it? That we hold them into idolatry. And oh, you're the Mishra, you're this, you're that, oh, you're the, the you're the, and it's very Inconvenient then, and I was like, "Oh no, please don't call me to be in life of mine," because uh, it becomes idolatry, and users are idolizing very natural sequence heater bees. Um, yeah. Uh, then at the same time, the saints of religion is all silly. It's like, no, because these heater bees are connected to the stars and skies and things beyond, so it validates it. As weird as the thing is, if I threw a boy called Joseph down a well or sold him into slavery, the whole world fell into holy perdition. I was like, why would the whole world fall into holy perdition? Because one kid is suffering in slavery. You know, there's lots of things you're meant to respect the holidays of the Lord. So uh, if he's suffering, you all have to suffer. I said this in other videos. So, Jesus, excuse me, I'm using names and words, but I'm passing. But I'm starved. For 40 days, 40 nights in the desert and he's all left to observe Ramadan or Lent to maintain Christianity if he's had to let him live another 7 years not exactly like Marie Antoinette or something, but like he was comfortable for 7 years, he was a very comfortable and constant Lent really wouldn't have to Lent so we used it so uh, yeah yeah um I explain this properly. Um, here be is so I connected. No, 
very easily exploited and you know they can manipulate you because you know you're human. You need to be able to put people in my area. Just to do a proximity in a different temporarily turn them here to be and they kill them or something or do weird things with it or not. There's a lot of comings and goings around where I live. Lots of comings. A lot of big gatties, you know what I mean? Backwater Irish town, I got a lot of big gatties. Uh, how do I explain that? Theological scientific proofs. <laughs> Excuse me. You've all been idly worship, idol worshipping, semi cool people. It was like, you know, the giddy goats, he was noticed. You know, I make ECG machines blow up. <laughs> Every time they put me in that fucking shrink hospital, <laughs> man, they put ECGs on me and they just go up straight as far as they get. Cuter be, be gotcha. Like, oh, it's broken. It's like, no. <laughs> ECG. I see in Cordoba and they even made some palm branches or something vibrate when I walk near them. <laughs> I could be a gypsy, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's nothing special again. This is very natural. I'm pretty sure I'm the last one as well. Which is kind of crappy, you know, I mean, like Prada or something, I mean, I'm worth a fortune. The last heater be on earth and you can turn people golden and kind of maybe get more to it. I don't know, I promise that I don't attempt the Lord. I don't do it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, yeah. Comes nice. I don't know what the Lord would come to I like the name. I thought it was a funny name. So, um... Night designer, you know what I mean? Like, fucking epic amounts of cavala and quantity of pyramid stuff I have been all over. Anyway, and I'd stop all the kitty fucking as well, you know, I do it from the inside. And I'd technically become Darth Vader, wouldn't I? And take over the business from the inside with Connors Nas. And they'd welcome me and they'd have it like Vader arriving in the Imperial Dream. That's how you really welcome them over. Uh, and I'd stop all the kitty fucking, you know, and all the you know, folk and all that kind of crap. But I do it from the inside, like Lord Vader. You know, choke all them and I will preserve my children. Preserve. <laughs> yes. I don't have children, but me, Israelites are 14. Jacob's 14. So, um, you know, if you have any more comments or questions, uh, 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 ask the Pope. Or Ghostbusters would be better.